In this video, I'm going to show you how I finished a guitar blank to get it ready for the customer to then add all the uh, guitar S types type stuff to it, as well as finish it himself. He just asked me to do some of the routing sanding work that he didn't have the tools to do. Now, admittedly, I don't know a lot about guitars, but I do know a fair amount about woodworking, and I thought this video could help people that know a lot about guitars, but not a lot about woodworking. So he sent me this blank that already had some of the holes pre-routed. I'll show you later in this video how to do that if you aren't if you just have a blank piece of wood you're working with. And the, the first thing I'm going to do is route out this shape. Now he provided me with this template. It's just quarter inch MDF. Um, if you need to make something like this, it's very easy to make. Um, you'd be doing the exact same thing I'm doing here, but on the MDF to make the template, which would be drawing on it and cutting it out with the jigsaw. If you don't want to do stuff like that, they sell these templates pretty inexpensively on places like Etsy. But basically, what I'm going to do is use a pattern follow bit in my router to get the exact pattern um, that he provided onto this blank but those bits are not really designed for removing a, a large amount of material. So I'm going through with my jigsaw and you can see I'm cutting within like an eighth of an inch of that line I drew on here. I'm removing the bulk of the material. He actually asked me to save some of this for him so he could do some testing with the finish he was gonna put on it. And then if you do any routing work with a pattern cutting bit, your best friend's gonna be double-sided tape. I believe this is Gorilla Glue, Glue Blant brand. It's one of my favorites. It's inexpensive. Um, I could put that on the pattern. And then this is the bit I'm using. It's basically a small cutter. It's 3 8 inch, um, the cutter. And then there's a bearing. That bearing will ride along any profile that you have and then copy that profile with the cutter onto the wood. Now, like I said, this is a 3 8 inch bit. It's a nicer um, brand of bit. It's by a company called Whiteside. I got this on Amazon. This 3 8 inch bit is nice because it can that bearing will follow this quarter inch pattern. Some of these bits you get the head of the cutters about an inch, and then you need to make your pattern out of something thicker, like three quarters of an inch to be able to do it. Um, so just think about that if you have to start buying some router bits. As you can see, that bearing is going to follow this perfectly and match that pattern. And then he had told me that his MDF cutout wasn't perfect, so it doesn't go all the way up the neck. So you can see I'm kind of leaving that area to deal with later because it would cut too far into the blank if I followed what he had provided. I think it should have been about um, a half of an inch, a little taller. So some people will go through and remove a ton of material at once. I like to make really light passes. I believe this blank was alder, so it's not the hardest wood, but it's also not the softest density wood. Sometimes if you try to remove too much, it just it, it, it bogs down the router. I don't go more than about a quarter inch at a time. Now once you have that profile, you could see I could remove the pattern and then keep following it because now that bearing is going to follow the profile I already created. Once I get a little bit further down, you could see that 3 8 inch bit it just isn't thick enough because this blank is about an inch and 3 quarters. I still have about 3 quarters of an inch left to go, so I switched out to an inch patterning bit. This one I got from Home Depot. The red brand is Freud. Um, this is also a really nice brand of bits. So that one will help me get further down on the blank. Then to finish it, I, you could finish it with the Freud bit, but I happen to have this in the shop because I have quite a few bits. This is the same sort of bit, but you could see the bearing is mounted on the top. So I can flip this over just so I don't have to elevate it and worry about cutting into um, the protective surface I have on my table saw. I could flip it upside down and this bit will use that top side bearing in order to finish the pattern. So that was basically why I ended up using that one. But like I said, if you wanted to, that Freud bit I had is, is deep enough to go all the way down. So then I just lightly sanded that. And like I said, I was left with this area to up at the top of um, the neck. He had kind of told me not to cut too far into certain spots, but basically, um, 
the recess that was pre-routed in here just needs to be followed. So what I had to do here, because there's already a recess, is basically I was going to make a plug for this section so that I could route around it. This ended up working out pretty well because if I would have, if the pattern had gone all the way to the top, it wouldn't really have mattered because the wood's so thin here, that ball bearing would have busted through the wood anyway and it would have uh, hit into the pattern. So as you can see, I'm just removing some of this material. I made a pencil line in order to follow it. And I'm just creating a little bit of a ledge so that I could take this piece of plywood because this is three quarter inch piece of plywood. It's a little hard to see, but that neck part tapers. So I could cut this so it's the perfect width to fit in the back and then trace that taper with a pencil with that ledge I created. It's just a little bit of material that has to be removed. So all I did was cut it down to my line and then I could use um, some sanding materials I had in order to clean up that curve. You could use a palm sander in order to clean up that curve if, if needs be. And then I could slide that into place and then you could see now that patterning bit I have can follow this blank. It won't kind of cut into that recess and then I could clean up this top side here. So it's going to be the exact same process. I'm going to use that same series of bits, the 3 8 inch bit, the inch bit, and then um, the bit with the top side bearing to flip it over and finish it up. So these are, most of the bits I have are, are somewhat new and, and nicer quality. So you can see they're not leaving a lot of burn marks or anything like that. If you buy cheaper bits, they won't last as long and they'll, they'll really burn the lumber on you. So then we had to move some of the holes that he had put on this template because it was going to hit the edge. So that's what I'm showing you. I'm moving these over. And this top hole, which I believe is where a potentiometer is going, has to be a backside um, recess like the one that this came with. And that black little plug is going to go over top of it. So the way that I'm going to recreate that is I'm drilling a hole through the whole piece of where it needs to go. That hole is going to be what I use for my hole saw in order to guide that in place. So I could take a compass, I can mark the inner lip because this black piece is going to need an inner lip to sit on, and then I can mark a little bit inside for the depth of it. I was pretty lucky this outer bit was the exact same size as a two and an eighth inch hole saw so I could do that lip pretty easily and I was also lucky in the fact that the inner hole I had to make I believe was exactly the same as an inch and a quarter. So all I'm going to do is on my drill press set a depth stop and then I believe this little lip here is about a little less than an eighteenth of an inch. So I went down an eighteenth of an inch and I could remove that material. So now I have an entire circle with the depth is an eighteenth of an inch. An eighth. I don't know why I keep saying an eighteenth. An eighth of an inch. And just use my finger to figure out if that was flush. Then like I said, I could switch over to the inch and three quarter hole saw. You could see why I put that original center hole in there because these hole saws have a centering bit. And if you take that out, they will dance all over the top of your material even if you're using it in a drill press. So then I'm gonna set the depth based on the cavity that was already pre-routed so I could get the exact right depth and then I could just drill through this whole piece. This circle's bigger than the circle I previously drilled, so I'll have that lip. And like I said, I have that original center hole which will keep everything aligned. So that's what that is going to look like. Now all the holes on the bottom are three-eighths of an inch, and then this hole on the top is a half of an inch. And like I keep saying, the reason I didn't drill that half inch in the beginning means it would have been too big to use the, whole, the, the pilot hole on the, the hole saw. So I could just go through with a three-eighths inch bit and drill through his template for those three holes down there. And then a half inch, I'm going to drill through this top hole for the potentiometer all the way through to the back because that plug's going to have to come out so any material I could drill through here would just make it easier. 
Now you could keep drilling some holes in the back to remove all the material, but a lot of times when you have a plug like this, if you just use a chisel, after a couple mallet blows, um, big chunks of it will start breaking off, which you can see here, and I could just chisel out this plug till I reach the bottom, and that is how um, I created that hole. So that's what that looks like with the lip and the hole. It's the same depth as the ones that came pre-routed in there. And then um, this disc fits just about perfectly in, in that space. So then I could take that template off again. Like I said, double sided. Uh, this double-sided tape is going to be uh, your best friend for stuff like this. Now he had some binding strip, two pieces of it, that he wanted to go on the outside of the guitar. The problem with this was the measurements, I believe, are metric, and I don't have a lot of metric tools. So I had to modify a rabbiting bit I have. I have a rabbiting bit that has various size bearings, which will give you different depth rabbits, but it wasn't exactly what the thickness I needed for those two pieces of binding strip you saw. So what I decided to do was I cut thin strips of electrical tape and I built up that dimension on the bearing so that it wasn't as thick. That was the problem, it was cutting too deep. So by adding this little bit of material on the outside, it's going to push the cutter further away from the surface and create the exact dimension I wanted. I put about five or six strips on there. I tried to make them to where the two ends meet. If you overlap the strips, you will get a bump and it will show up in your surface. So I tried to make them as flat, as flush as possible. I could test it out remove I think I put on five I think I ended up removing one and I got it perfect before I tried it on the guitar body now this is an example of um, a bit that is not as nice a quality as some of the other bits so it does leave some burn marks but luckily this is all going to be epoxied into place and you won't see it now it's extremely hot this summer in my shop and electrical tape is already kind of gooey so um, if you are going to use this method, I'm going to highly recommend doing a little piece at a time like I'm doing. I checked to make sure my tape was still in place. There was actually one time where it was starting to slip because as this goes around, that tape does not spit, make the bearing spin as freely as it does without it because it creates um, a little bit of friction. And so it will heat up and that tape can come off. So if you are gonna do that method, just go slowly and keep checking that making sure everything's in place. So then for the bottom, he wanted a little bit of a round over. It, I had a similar issue where the eighth inch round over bit I had didn't have the bearing on it that I needed. So I happened to have these bearings laying around the shop. I could swap out the bearing and put that round over on the back. So those, th these bits all come with removable bearings, so that was pretty easy to do. And then he, uh, that blue tape, I was kind of staying where he told me to stay away from the neck with, with this round over. So this was pretty simple just on the, on the back here once I swapped out those bearings. And then it left, you know, a little bit of, of some, some wood fuzz on there, but everything cleaned up real nicely with, with sandpaper on this. And then the last thing was um, a, a plug for the jack that goes in the side. This was pretty easy. I just freehanded this in the, the, the general vicinity of where he wanted it to be. It ended up being a half inch hole, so I kind of stepped up the drill bit so I could get it aligned and as square as possible. And then once I was done, you could see that that input fits right through there and goes into that cavity that was already um, in the back. So stuff like this could be a little nerve wracking because these blanks are not really cheap and you can mess them up pretty quickly. So then this is what that looks like. And like I said, I'm gonna show you a little bit because like I said, some of these blanks come with nothing on them. Like you can obviously see parts of his were pre-routed. I don't know a lot about guitars. I don't know why all the parts weren't pre-routed. But if you want to start with just a blank, you could easily make any shape by doing something similar to what I'm doing here. I'm just made a very quick kind of mimic of a, of a pickup that was on his guitar. 
Um, I drew some quick lines, quick pattern. I'm gonna do this pretty quickly. This is just quarter inch ply. If you're going to make patterns, I recommend making it out of MDF because you could see the thin veneer of the, of the ply is kind of flaking off, which won't affect it, but it could be a pain to try and jigsaw that out. And like I said, I'm going quickly, but if I was making this out of MDF, I would cut just shy of my line and then sand to my line to make this perfect. We're just cleaning it up real quickly with a rasp. And then that patterning bit is gonna do the exact same thing it did for the outside of the guitar body, but for this inside dimension. So if you're making a pattern, I'm gonna recommend um, making them oversized because then you could clamp to the, your surface if you don't have that double-sided tape. Um, it just makes life a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna just drill a hole so this bit can fit in that hole to the depth I want. And then I'll just use this bit till I get to that depth. These bits are really good for following patterns. They're not great at removing material vertically. So you could kind of lower them into the piece, but sometimes they'll burn a little bit. And same process with that 3 8 inch bit. You can make really thin patterns, just like I said, this is quarter inch ply. It will follow that outside edge. Um, a thing of note is it is going to create rounded edges. So you could see my square pattern is now rounded. And that pattern was very quick, so this doesn't look super symmetric. But that's how you could do this if you don't have all of those pre-routed holes pretty quickly. The line, everything, measure it. And um, the sky's kind of the limit with the, sh the exterior outer edge shapes you can make as well as inner in shapes you can make with those bits.